Hey everybody, Danny Mod here. Thanks for joining us. This week I've got a question for you. Are you a senior golfer that would love to generate a lot more power with every single part of your game, particularly that driver, but you don't have the inclination to get into the gym, maybe you don't have the body to be able to turn like a top professional, maybe you don't have a personal trainer that these top players have daily to help them build these athletic swings, but you would still love to have 20, 30, 40 yards onto your drives and obviously hit your irons a lot further. Well, in this week's training, I'm going to share with you my three-step process that I've just literally given to a recent client of mine to make a massive difference to the way they were hitting the golf ball and possibly just like you, they don't have the time to go to the gym every single day and build their bodies in a way that swings like a tour pro. So let's get straight into the training and let's go to step number one. If you want to generate power, you're going to have to generate club head speed. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to need to let go of this club. What do I mean by that? Well, I want you to grab a golf club right now to experience this. Take a golf club, hold it like you're holding a tube of toothpaste. Firm enough for the toothpaste just to trickle out, but not firm enough like you're squeezing it and it's going to shoot out of the bottle. That's the type of pressure that you want. Now, without moving your body, what I want you to do is just start to swing the wrists and the arms freely. Now, when you do this, it should feel like the club's head is very much out of control, but that is speed, that's club speed. This is what you see with all the best players, they've got club head speed. Now, at this stage, yes, it'd be classed as a little bit too wristy, and we're gonna get to that. It won't be wristy by the time we get to step three, but you need this feeling at this stage. We don't want people at this stage, they're holding on too tightly, they're stiff as a board. There's no way of creating any effortless power if you start with this as your foundation. So, you're swinging your arms and your club. If you're at home and you don't have space to do this, simply get your arms hang get right down like this, nice and soft, and just swing them backwards and forwards out of control. Simple as that. Get your grip pressure, get the flow. That is stage number one. Stage number two is now you've got to introduce your body. And this is where if you've struggled with a bit of flexibility, things can start to go awry a little bit, all right? But let's start with this. So we want to get our bodies moving. Why? Because you need to get into a position to store power. If you don't make a, uh, a decent amount of shoulder turn, it's almost impossible, one, to hit balls accurately, and two, to generate any real form of power. So we need to get you into as big or as full a backswing as we possibly can. And the way we're gonna do that is, is we're gonna try a couple of things. The first thing we wanna do, watch this, we're letting the wrists and the arms flow freely. And now what we're gonna do, if you struggle with flexibility, we're gonna let your lead heel come off the ground. So from this position here, your lead heel's coming off of that ground that releases that, uh, the lead hip. It provides mobility for you to turn back here. I'm also turning my head as well. All this is helping me get more of a body turn on the way back, hugely important. Now you might find that actually lifting your left heel up, you know, you've tried this before and you lose your balance a little bit and it's maybe not for you. That's fine. What you can do is use this one. This one has been really popular too, where you simply draw your trail foot back, in my case, my right foot. And again, that releases your right hip a little bit and again, helps you to turn and get a much fuller motion here. Some people really love that. So whatever it is, you've got your flow of your wrists, your flow of your arms, and now you've got a flow of the body. So you make your biggest turn possible. So now that is step number two finished. Once you've done that, to be fair, you could just simply, let's just start with that before we move on to step three, just hit a few shots just doing that. So you've got the sensation here. And let, I'm gonna do the one where I draw my foot back a little bit here. So I'm gonna hit a few shots, literally allowing this club to flow freely, and I've made a nice big turn, and let's see what happens. There we go. So that would be a really good start. But for some of you, and, and you might then definitely, you might be happy with just those first two steps and think, God, I've done it, I'm happy with those two. The third step is the thing what I believe really is the glue. It holds it all together. It adds more distance, but it also helps the distance, uh, it helps you maintain accuracy at the same time. And that is learning to organize the body. So what do I mean by this? Both the backswing and the downswing need to be started from the ground up. What do I mean by this? Well, here's the problem with huge losses of accuracy and uh, poor distance. 
Most people start the backswing too much with their hands and then the lower part follows. They then start the downswing with the, the top half, which is, and then the lower half follows. These are all causing problems like over the top slices, you name it. So we need to reverse this process. What we wanna do here is this. We wanna get the sensation that the lower part starts the backswing and the lower part starts the downswing. So it's a step to the right and then look on the way down. Look, I'm not kind of in a sense um, doing this and my lower part is coming here and then look for this and then firing through. All this you can't think about. It's way too complicated. So how do you learn to feel this happening? Well, I've got a couple of things. I'm going to introduce this in a second. because I've got an orange whip here, which makes this kind of helps you feel this a little bit easier. But if you're at home right now, what you can do is just simply take your hands, put them on your shoulders like this, get yourself set. And what I want you to do is this. You're going to make a nice back swing here as much as you can. Again, if you feel like I want to try and get your back first in your target, if you can't do that, maybe release your heel or draw the, the trail heel back just so you can get a nice big turn. Then what you're doing is almost like feeling your back to your target. Watch this. We're going to start and we're going to almost there. And then when we get to about impact area, we're going to fire the top half. So it kind of looks like this. I'm starting there. Look, I'm starting the ground and then I'm going. I'm starting down then I'm going. You just feel like that basic separation. For some of you, you might be just doing this, okay? That's something you can do indoors. You can do this with a golf club or you can learn the feel of this. So watch this. I'm swinging backwards now, watch this. If I swing with my arms like this, there's no power. But if I imagine, and you could do this, imagine this. I've got this big lump of weight at the end and I'm gonna toss it as far as I can out there. Watch this. This is lagging behind, isn't it? And I'm gonna throw it out there. I wanna get the relationship of where that is and where my body is. My body's opening and that's firing afterwards. It isn't doing this. Can you see a difference? Yeah? So you're learning to sense where that head is in space. Then you grab your golf club, okay? So there's a club, there's a weight. Where's the most powerful place to, to toss this? Look at this, I'm opening, my lower body's opening, and I'm firing, learning to feel that motion. Then we get to the golf club. You're gonna have to really let go with this. This is the hardest bit, I believe, in any golfer is, is you've got to let go. If you try to control this, if you try and get too stiff here and control it, all that's gonna happen, your lower section's gonna freeze, and you're gonna hit with the upper section. So watch this. I'm swinging and I'm committing and I'm committing to that follow through. Trying to organize that body in the best way I can. Let's draw my right foot back to, to a nice illustration. So I'm opening up here and all I'm doing is getting the feeling like this comes in a little bit later. Let's have a look at this in action. And for me, it gives me a nice little draw. So if you slice a golf ball, it's gonna really kind of help you to reduce that slice. So that's the three steps process. Let's just go through that just in summary there. So what have we done? Three simple steps. You've got to get a soft enough grip to allow the wrists and the arms to flow. You've then got to get the body working so you can store some energy at the top. Make sure maybe you'll either lift your left heel to do this or draw your trail foot back if you really struggle to, to get that turn. And then you've got to learn to kind of organize the, um, the coordination. So ultimately, you're turning back here, the lower section leads, then you go like this. So this is something you can do indoors just to kind of get that sensation. Or again, one of my favorite training aids, I'll put a link in the description below, you can get a discount off this one, is you feel the weight here, your body's really, really smart. If you've got a big weight here and you're thinking about tossing it out there, your body, by the way, naturally does this. It naturally organizes itself to kind of create this motion. It's, it's just natural. It's not natural to stand over a golf ball, freeze as you like, and do this. If you do that, yes, you're not gonna generate power. So just imagine for a second, I'm just tossing this out into the, into the distance. There I am, I'm tossing it out there. And as I do this, every single person I've done this with, 
everybody opens up the lower body, starts the lower body, and then, then the, this whip comes in afterwards. That's the catapult. It's a slinging style of effect. Once you've got that feeling, you clearly pick up the driver. And this is possibly a bit of a bonus tip. Don't waste too much time. If you hover over the golf ball too long, get too static, you're going to get stiff. None of this will work. So you get yourself set here, take that sensation, and literally go for it. As simple as that. Build it up. You're going to have all these things crop up like this feels out of control. There's no way I'm going to be able to hit it straight with this, etc. Those are things that crop up nearly every time I coach. And every time I coach and give a lesson, it surprises people. One, how effortless this uh, swing can be, how much further they decide to hit it, but more importantly, they cannot believe the accuracy for something that really feels for them very much out of control. So I really hope you try this. And if you know anybody else who could really benefit, maybe they struggle with some flexibility, just like you, then please share it. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, maybe press that subscribe button and the notification bell so that I can notify you every time I release a video just like this one. But until next week, have a great golfing week.